Hello again and welcome back to 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with and today our with is Robert Marilucci. So did I pronounce your name correct there, Robert? You did. Well done. Perfect. Well done for Newfoundlander. <laughs> so Robert, can we start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. I'm uh, honored to be the founder and CEO of Mindshare Learning Technologies, Canada's leading edtech news strategy and events company. I also co-founded C21 Canada, and I'm the CEO of Canadians for 21st Century Learning and Innovation. And we're celebrating our 10th anniversary next year and 20th with Mindshare next year as well. So uh, a lot of history there, and we're really passionate about uh, making an impact on student learning um, and uh, supporting teachers and uh, leaders to really understand uh, have a deep understanding about uh, the value of uh, tech-infused pedagogy right. in the now, 21st century. Now, Robert, I know over the years you've interacted with a, a lot of folks, both inside and outside the ed tech community. Um, and, you know, through that work and with Mindshare and these other initiatives, uh, you've gained a lot of insights about how technology can impact learning, but also the impact that aggressive technology can have upon a system. So what advice would you give to school leaders that are either trying to finish out this school year or how they would plan for September knowing what's happened in this school year so that it's a little bit more, the adjustment's a little less for them? Absolutely. This has been, you know, I call it COVID time, uh, learning time. And uh, one of the most technologically transformational periods in our lifetime. And it's, I like to say, it's never been a more exciting time to be in education. And it really takes a digital village to raise a child in, here in the 21st century. We created the Canadian Coalition for Learning at Home that I am spearheading and uh, with a number of partners, including Let's Talk Science founder, uh, the CEO of Nelson, uh, Microsoft, um, and a number of other partners. And we're providing free resources, value that probably about $50 million, and really helping you know, sustained learning happen. I'm hearing that in some cases, there's less than 50% of students that are actively participating, which is unfortunate. That's going to have some serious repercussions for back to school, whatever that form takes. We're hosting a CIO Alliance uh, webinar um, May 20th with Peter Singh, who's the lead of CIO in Toronto with Dr. Miriam Chason from New Brunswick and uh, another brilliant mind, uh, Stephen Whiffen, the Director of Instruction and CIO of Coquitlam School Division to speak to exactly what you're asking me, but, you know, how to sustain learning in this time we're in, this remote learning period, and how to pivot and transition and make things smoother for back to school. I think the sooner they can get back, the better. And, uh, you know, and I suspect some will be getting back in June, which would give you a bit of a head start and re-engagement of kids. You know, uh, social emotional learning and well-being has been a huge issue for a lot of people. You know, I, I'm a hockey player. I've coached for 15 years. I've been rollerblading. I've been trying to balance it off because in education, we tend to be so giving and forget about ourselves. It's a selfless career. And it's not a healthy one in a lot of ways. And so striking a balance with teachers, with parents, with kids, and really uh, helping alleviate stress. I had a really good rollerblade session yesterday and I'm trying to stay fit for my back to season hockey team faculty event at your uh, program where my left winger is 90 years old. So I got to keep up with our ex president, Ian McDonald. So, you know, it's not all about online learning, you know, engaging kids with project-based learning activities, whether it's helping you know, bake or cook something and the measuring, the math involved and the science can, you can really dig deeply into that or going outdoors and, you know, working on the garden and the chemistry involved there and, 
and the science. You know, there's a lot of great opportunities around the house and tools and, and what have you. You know, it breaks my heart when I hear students getting uh, and parents getting emails with worksheets. You know, that is the lowest form of adoption, uh, you know, with the SAMR model, right? And so we, you know, as much as we can say, well, there's a hundred percent adoption now in some form, we really have a long way to go. And, you know, I don't blame the teachers because there are a lot of teachers who wanted to embrace technology, but they didn't have the resources. They didn't have the PD, you know, so there's a lot of different reasons why, and I'm advocating for a national task force to uh, address these challenges so that this, we don't get caught again where we're struggling to create Google Classrooms and desperate to get whatever we can in front of parents to help them. You know, I, I did a blended learning master's at Pepperdine 14 years ago. I was doing blended learning 14 years ago. So the technology adoption curve has accelerated because of COVID time uh, tenfold. You know, now it might take for what would take 10 years to adopt is down to like one year. And people are discovering tools like Zoom and others that really add a lot of value. So if you're making an impact with your tools and it's adding a lot of value and you're blending the, you know, real world with the online world and 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 keeping the kids engaged and and you know that's that's what it comes down to. So having them come back you know, for half days or alternate days, um, you know, just the social distancing is really important. But, uh, you know, getting them back sooner is absolutely critical, I think, than later. They can't go the whole summer. And it gives us an opportunity to reconsider the school year. And let's break it up. You don't need two months off. Let's give, you know, two week breaks throughout the entire year, every quarter. Parents would love that versus two months off of packing everything in and camps and et cetera. You know, maybe it's a month off, but not two months off is ex exceedingly long in my opinion. And that was part of the Agarian calendar, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, you mentioned about the, you know, the essentially getting ready that we got caught this time around and uh, the nature of pandemics is we know there's going to be, local flare-ups there's likely going to be a second maybe third or right. third waves um, what advice would you give for school leaders now as they start to think of how to plan their schools their faculty their staff their students right. to be ready for the next time so that we aren't sort of caught scrambling like we were this time right so good question so my wife is you know city clerk in uh, the toronto area and they have a disaster management plan. So develop a disaster management strategy for continuation of learning. I wonder how many school districts have one in place. I really question that because most of them were caught and the provinces were caught with their pants down. Maybe I shouldn't use that term, but you know what I mean. So. Uh, I'm going to do some probing around that. I want to share best practices because some districts were better positioned. As Michael Fullen described when I interviewed him recently, and uh, uh, he talked about the districts who had been doing something in advance of this, uh, SunWest School Division, personalized electronic blended learning, K-12. to They have over 100 courses, dynamic courses. They just pivoted. Coquitlam pivoted, many just pivoted and just kept going. You know, it was a much smoother process than those who were doing almost zero. And it requires vision from the top and professional learning and a commitment throughout the system to make that happen. Of course, teacher unions come into play as well. You got to play nice with them. All right. Well, thank you very much, Robert. We'll make sure to get some of those links down in the description below for uh, some of the events that you've got coming up that uh, will help is focus that, on this topic. Is that it, Michael? Is that? That is it. And, those are the three And I think we went we over five do. minutes, so five minutes is, uh, is tough to keep to. But listen, I want to thank you for all your thought leadership and all the 
excellent work that you do in nurturing uh, 21st century learning. It's always a pleasure to connect with you and uh, keep doing great things for teachers and kids. All right. Thank you for that, Robert. And uh, so this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With. And today our with has been Robert Marilacci.